In today's episode, we are going to make a ridiculously fast micro sugarcane farm that's about two times faster than most other ones that you've seen out there. And to do that, you just put punch of sugar cane. I'm just kidding. That That's not it. Let's jump in. You may remember in the last episode, we built a villager breeder topside there and we made a way to bring all the villagers down which I've I've started to do a little bit of. We got villager here, here, here. We got a few villagers down here. They're ready to go somewhere. But before we actually start moving them, I, I'm thinking about my future plans. And I believe that we're going to end up converting this area here into a like small trading hall where we have only librarian villagers and librarians. These guys they like to trade paper for stuff. So I, I need a lot of paper to trade with them to get some early emeralds to be able to, you know, buy things like name tags for stuff that I do here on, on the streams, probably mostly and other things, too. So we need a sugarcane farm. That way we can get all the paper that we need. Now, we could build a large like passive farm that just kind of sits and grows and collects sugarcane over time. It doesn't require any interaction at all which we probably will at some point. But at this point right now, we actually have access to a lot of bone meal. We have a fish farm, we have a skeleton farm, so we can get bone meal pretty easily. At first, I was thinking our sugarcane farm that we're gonna build was gonna go somewhere, somewhere down there. Our long hallway that has our uh, brewing area for our potions. I thought maybe we would do another offshoot for sugarcane farm, but I'm kind of thinking against that now because that's kind of out of the way. If I want to get my paper for my villagers, I want to be able to get it pretty quickly and easily. So instead, how about we build it somewhere over here? The question becomes, where does it go? And I think that where could be maybe right here. I mean, this is already kind of feels like a hallway in a way. There's going to be a villager pod here and here, probably or somewhere in this area. So what if they kind of are surrounding the entrance to a new area where we have a sugarcane farm? What we can do is we can make a little room. We don't need a lot of space, but I think I want to do at least a tiny bit more than only just inset it into the wall. But if I have villagers, maybe we can bump these villagers out like one can go like here and the other can go here. I think that'll be OK. In any event, what I can do is I'm going to dig out just a very small room, maybe just like an inset cubby, maybe even, I don't know, where we can put all our sugarcane farm. Okay, so we have our little room carved out here, and it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. We've got some sugarcane growing over here. Blue Jay won't leave me alone. He, he's being mean to me because of that death in the last episode. It wasn't my fault. It's a bug in the game. Anyways, we're going to come over here. We're going to knock up couple pieces of stuff <laughs> of, of blocks and then in this one right here we're gonna go ahead and just put water here and we could cover it over with like a half slab or something that's fine and actually I need I need a piece of sand actually you know what just for my purposes I'm, I'm gonna back this whole thing up by one I'm gonna back the whole thing up by one let's go back one more let's put our water here let's put our sand right here because we're gonna have something in front to block the sugar cane from getting out so i wanted to have i want to have a little bit of room for that uh let's put this here okay perfect so next thing we need is a dispenser which, which i also forgot to grab so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our dispenser and we're gonna place it right here because this dispenser is going to be dispensing bone meal onto our sugar cane it's going to be right there we need a way to break the sugar cane. So we're going to take a regular piston and place it right here by holding down the shift or crouch button and placing it down. We're also going to need an observer. And I can never remember which way these guys place. Is it this way? Yeah, this way. So we want the face facing forward, looking forward, right? And here, let's get our little piece of sugar cane. Let's place it down. Next, we're going to come behind here. Actually, I need a little bit more space. And one thing about this, it's not it's not big. It's not the most compact because I'm sacrificing a little bit of size saving for this thing being a lot faster. Because when I come over here, oh, you know what I forgot to do? We forgot to do something. We need a way to collect the sugar cane. Hold on. We need a way to actually collect our sugar cane. So actually, I'm going to take this out. That's going to flow for a second. That's fine. Uh, let's break this block and break this block. I don't know which way do I want my storage to go? Where do I even want the storage to go to? I haven't thought about this at all. Maybe we'll we'll hide like storage down in the floor for this. I think that sounds like a good idea. We don't need a big storage area for this, really. So maybe what we'll do is we'll take a hopper 
we'll place it forward just like this. So that's that's going forward, right? And then we are going to take our piece of sand. We're going to place that back down right here like this. And then what we're going to need to do is we actually need to embed a hopper minecart inside of this block of sand. I'm going to show you how to do that. So we're going to break out these blocks beside. We're going to take some rails. We're going to just like this going down into the sand, right? Then we're going to take this hopper minecart. We're going to push it. It, it goes right inside of there. It fits right in. Perfect. It's exactly where we want it to be. It is on top of that hopper we just placed down. If you guys remember us placing the hopper down a few moments ago. Now, that hopper minecart is trapped there forever. It's inside of this block. It being inside this block means that every time sugarcane gets broken, that hopper minecart sucks it up and it immediately places it inside that hopper. See, I'm throwing this. You don't even see it. It sucks up the items so fast and places them inside of the hopper here. Perfect. That's what we need. Okay, now, now we can move on to the sugar cane. And also, if we want to, we go ahead and we place a chest right here. And that'll give us access to the sugar cane that we bone meal to make. And we won't really need to have a lot of storage because we can make this stuff on demand. Okay. Okay. So, next thing we need to do is we need to set something up to turn this piston on and off anytime that sugar cane grows. That's what the observer is for. It's going to see when sugar cane grows, it's going to tell the piston to break the sugar cane, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a block, a block. Doesn't matter what these are. It could be glass. It could be something else. It's fine. The one that has to be glass is this one right here. This one has to be glass 100%. This one right here needs to be a solid block. So something like this. Solid block. Um, and then actually this one is the one that needs to be glass. This one. Both of these need to be glass so the signal can travel down and through. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take redstone dust. I'll place it here, 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 and then we're going to take a repeater and put it right here just like this. Now, what is this going to do? I'm going to show you here in a second, but what it's going to do is anytime sugar cane grows up to this height, the observer is going to see that it's grown. It's going to send power to this block right here. And when this block has power, it powers this whole redstone line. So the signal travels over and down. Since we're using glass here, that signal can actually travel diagonally down and through. And then it's going to go to this repeater. And, and instead of using a redstone dust here, we want to use a repeater because it's going to give us just a little bit of a delay. A repeater adds a small delay before it sets off this um, piston, which we do want. We do want that slight delay. So if I take this, for example, place this here, place this here. As you can see, it breaks it. It even actually triggers it twice, which which is fine. We want that because we're going to have the timer for this, the clock for this go fast enough to keep up. OK, next thing we're going to do is I'm going to place a, a deep slate tile right here. It's because that's going to be my decorative bit. But the more important part is that we need to use a redstone comparator and oh, we cannot put it right there. So I'm going to I'm going to slightly change this for aesthetics. But what I'm about to do here, you could do at this level, like where you, you make this little clock right here. I, I'm not going to make it here because I want it to look a certain way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it over here. I'm going to bring it behind the wall right here. And we're just going to make a small clock. We're going to hit plate blah, blah, blah. We're going to face a comparator here and then we're going to take some redstone dust as do a little loop just like this and then turn this comparator on subtract mode so now whenever we power this block this is going to make a clock which if we put a lever right here you can see works just like that now we need to get this signal and we need to power this dispenser Ooh, okay see if we power the dispenser directly it also sets that off don't want that to happen easy to fix though we're just gonna come down a block oh we need to move our water source that's fine. Ultimately, we need water on some block touching this, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that out. I'm going to pop this out. I'm going to put the water right here and then we're going to close that back in. We have to have a solid block here. That slab there would not work. It would it would mess the whole thing up. So we're going to get rid of the slab. No problem. And we can still cover that up all the same. So now we can take our redstone dust and power the block below the dispenser. Now it's called salt. Well, now we're doing what's called soft powering. Hard power means you power the dispenser directly and it shares power to anything touching it. Soft powering, it means we, we power a block touching it. So it gets power from that block, but it, it's not sending power anywhere else. So soft power is what we want here. Also, I've, I messed this up. Go in there, please. Okay. 
think that's I think that should be okay. That should be fine. And believe it or not, this thing is about done. So we can take this. Oh, did we already had a sugar cane? Let's put our sugar cane here. Okay, so this thing is functional. Let's get so oh, we need a way to put bone meal in it, don't we? It'd probably be a good thing to have. Let's um let's grab a hopper here and then let's put uh, probably a double chest would make sense because we, we could go through bone meal kind of quick here because it, it goes really fast and we're gonna want to get a lot of sugar cane. So where's another chest? Okay, I'm gonna run over to the fish. I need to empty my inventory first. I'm gonna run over to the fish farm and get a whole bunch of bone blocks to bring over. Okay, so what we're gonna do. Is we're going to take some bone meal and we're going to put it in the chest here and it's going to start to flow into the uh the dispenser and the hopper and fill things up right and let's like oh i just made white dye let's actually get this thing pretty full i would like to have a decent amount of bone meal in stock ready to go so we can actually run this thing for our first time and get quite oh probably shouldn't put the white dye in there either <laughs> get a lot of sugar cane and actually, let me show you guys another trick for this really quick, because this thing will actually dispense bone meal so fast. Is this right axe? Yeah, it is. Right pickaxe. Uh, it'll dispense it so fast. It's actually going to use it faster than we can put it in. So one little trick that we can do, we can knock this out. We can knock this out is we can take a hopper and run it in right here and right here. So now we're going to fill it at double the speed. And next, all you need to do is flick this lever right here. And look how fast it makes the sugar cane. Perfect. This is good. Okay. So now we just need to block this area off. So now I, I need to get myself an easier way to access the uh, chest down here, which oof. I, I actually, I need to hold on. We need to fix this. Good way to fix this. We want this thing to be properly done is we just need an upside down stair facing that way. Just like that. We can still open the chest because it's a stair. Get some of this junk out of there too. Um, and then we'll put like a trapdoor, maybe a row of trapdoors or something right here, just to kind of decorate that up a little bit. Maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll like clean this area up a little bit too, right? Put a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this. Okay, that's looking good. That's looking good. All right, let's close it up. Let's turn it on. And look at it go. <laughs> this is so good. Now this thing, if you run it long enough, it's going to get stopped up because it is just shooting out sugar cane so incredibly fast that the the hopper minecart that can keep up but the hopper isn't going to be able to pull the sugarcane out fast enough but that's fine it's the best that we can do given the setup that we've done here to keep things nice and simple i think this thing looks nice and clean too let me add in a couple more decorative bits just to set the mood in here make it look good in rtx and make things a little bit more accessible and here it is all finished we decked it out with uh, a lot of different uh, trap doors and just kind of change the lighting around a little bit. I built these little boxes here just to, I don't know, add some type of like extra shape to the room in a way I didn't really have. It's just kind of flat. So it helped uh, get rid of the flatness a little bit. And yeah, we can come over here. We can turn this thing on. That lever is going to do that. That's fine. It's whatever. And now we can get ourselves lots of sugar cane in preparation for a villager breeder coming up really soon. And like I showed you guys before, I can get the to the chest down here that's got all the sugar cane that's coming in. To get to the bone meal, I do have to poke a hole in the wall. That was really the best solution that I had that wouldn't like cause other types of potential issues. So um, yeah, not too bad, not too bad at all. And also, while it's a small space, let's take a look with RTX turned on. And here we go. And it's looking really nice. It's looking really subtle. It's got like a little bit of mood to it, right? You can't quite see in here as good when things are happening just because the way that glass works and there's no light behind it. Although maybe we could add, could we add a light behind it? Would that help? Oh, hey, that's better. We have some light in here now. It looks a little weird just the way it reflects like off of the glass, but otherwise it looks cool. We actually see inside of it now so we can watch it work even if we have RTX mode turned on. This is great. I'm loving it. And just to show that we are making progress out here, I needed to get oxidized copper. So I, I just laid a whole bunch out here in the field. The way copper works is you have to lay the blocks out at least four spaces apart from each other for them to oxidize faster. So I've just kind of like scattered a bunch of copper blocks all over the place here. And just so you can see, we are making progress on our tower here. I actually even have an add-on installed called Structura, which I'll probably show in a future episode here that gives you like a ghost image 
of the structure that you've made elsewhere in like say creative mode, for example. And it allows you to bring that ghost image into any world. It doesn't matter if it's a server or realm, whatever, as long as they don't have packs like um, client side add-ons turned completely off on your world, you could do this. So it's kind of helping me build this up. You can see how far I've actually built and you can see how far the build still actually goes because it's transparent up there. So we're going to keep working on this. It's been a little slow going because there's been big news and updates and like new releases and all sorts of stuff in Minecraft lately. So I've been working really hard and a whole lot on all those things, but we are still working on this too. And this tower will be done here pretty soon. And lastly, I'd like to give everybody a big thank you. The series has been doing fantastic. Really, the channel has as a whole. We have a lot of videos that are like constantly getting 25, 30,000 plus views pretty quickly. We even have a number of them here on the guide series that are over 50,000 views. So I'm very glad that you guys are liking all the content that's getting put out. If you're watching this right now, you're not already subscribed to the channel. Make sure to hit the subscribe button to help out with the channel even more. Also, check your notifications. A lot of times they get set to personalized. If you turn them to on, you will always get notified whenever I go live or whenever a video comes out. Otherwise, you might or you might not get that notification. So I want to thank everybody for hanging out in today's video. It was a fun one and I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, wait, I, I did this. We can wave officially now. Bye. <laughs>